The first time we noticed it was the day he was born. So I just remember his leg twitching uncontrollably. It was very floppy, it seemed like his muscles were just going all over the place. He was in and out of the incubator for over a week. The pediatrician came in a couple times that week um, at the hospital and they sent us up to Dartmouth-Hitchcock in Lebanon. The medical genetics division at CHAD focuses on children and we offer uh, general genetic services where a child is referred in either by a primary care uh, pediatrician or family physician or by one of the specialists uh, here in CHAD. They thought it was uh, Noonan syndrome and then they did a blood test. In Aiden's case, what we did is we ordered what's called a chromosome microarray. The chromosome microarray uh, looks uh, very carefully at uh, segments of the chromosome. And what it looks for is, is uh, are all the genes there? In Aiden's case, that's exactly what happened. He had a specific region of the genome where there was a deletion or a missing set of genes. When the doctor first came out, and said, okay, it's not Newton syndrome, it's a, it's a syndrome called microdeletion syndrome. He said, I'm gonna be honest, this is a, a really rare chromosome disorder. He was actually the first one diagnosed in the region with the syndrome. Uh, Coulin de Vries syndrome, or 17Q21.31 deletion syndrome, is very uncommon. There's only perhaps uh, fewer than 100 patients uh, in the medical literature uh, in the world. I remember the questions were like, okay, what's his, you know, what's life going to be like in 10 years, 15 years, but the, the symptoms and everything that comes along with the syndrome is so broad. I mean, kids that have what he has at age one can be speaking, but there's someone else that could be age 20 and can't speak at all. There's certain things that um, he may, may, may necessarily not be able to do that other children can do, um, but he, he tries so hard to involve himself you know, in the activities and stuff. Like, he may not be able to throw a ball as well as another kid. However, that doesn't phase him. He still wants to try. He still puts, puts forth his body. He puts forth everything he has to be able to participate and do what the other kids are doing because he loves being around children. His occupational therapist, you know, told us last year that we don't know if he's going to write. He might use his communication device for the rest of his life. We don't know how strong his muscles are in his hand to actually hold the pen properly to actually start writing his name. But um, Good job. a few months ago, um, he wrote his name. Okay. The doctors do tell you we don't know. And it's true, and you don't is, know. Yeah, you don't know. And, but it seems like it's, you think you, there's a limit to what he's gonna be able to do, but right now it's limitless. We, he just keeps on doing things. We call them small miracles. Finding a diagnosis early uh, has the advantage of uh, uh, several things. One is to answer the, the question, w what's going on with my child, and, and more importantly, what do we do about it? Um, and the sooner you get to that, um, the better for the child and family. The genetics clinic is great. Um, you know, they've, they've worked through this with us. Uh, you know, they know we're alone, and they've and they deal with um, at least one other child with the same syndrome. Noah's uh, uh, family um, uh, had been working for a long time to try to understand why he, uh, his developmental differences were present. They really wanted to understand what's the basis of this. Why is he having all of these difficulties with, um, with speech and, and with learning? We had uh, experience with NOAA, what we've experienced with, with many families, which is the technology comes along that answers the question they've been asking for years. I think what's unique about the medical genetics program at CHAD is, like CHAD itself, is focused on the, the population that we serve, the needs of the patients and families that we serve. Uh, Beauregard's and Valets, you know, they're great families they're, and they're, they're, they're fantastic. They love their kids. They're, they're going all out to, to, of course, to take care of their kids, as all of us would. As it gets them back to what they need and want uh, for their kids, is to be part of their family lives and their communities. And if this moves that along, um, then I'm happy to be a small part of that. Chad is amazing with children. They've just been wonderful. We want to 
stress to all the families out there is to be an advocate for your child.